you're doing here in this case is turn around to uh, address some of the equity gaps that exist here for our, our men of color. So this is actually a uh, part of our strategic plan uh, in terms of to uh, be able to address the equity gap here on, uh, on our campus. And, and as, we, uh, as we research this, then we have another thing on April here. So we have this, uh, the data that we're going to research this and look for every so we have this here. Uh, it was uh, it was actually for our men of color here uh, on the campus. So as you can see, you know, I do move this as far as gender equity gaps. And everything you can see out there on the internet is, is you know, in terms of when you hear the word gender equity gap, it, it's just mostly then uh, our women have been, you know, uh, have been on the uh, on the bad side of that in terms of not having an opportunity for a woman in higher education, the main features in the, the workforce, uh, and so on. And, and and I think that still exists today. Well, I'm not saying that it doesn't exist still today, but one of the areas where we found uh, some gaps here was on our campus. As we looked at the data, uh, we we saw that our men of color uh, do not. Well, they do not even speak right now. Uh, our men of color uh, they do not participate uh, in 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 campus events at the same level. They're even in the working school in this case today. I think that's kind of representative of, of, of that. Uh, also, uh, in terms of our, uh, our our population here at the university, uh, if, if you look at our campus, we are up to seventy percent female and only about thirty percent male. So again, if you look at the Imperial Valley, even though mm -hmm. we're the only four-year university uh, in the valley, we have better participation. Uh, rate in terms of for our, our men. Uh, also, our men of color have higher probation rates. Uh, so the likelihood of your men of color likelihood of being on probation is going to be higher, and then also lower retention rates. So we're going to first year retention rates and those those students and so they get that stuff as your college that first year. And if you're male, the likelihood of, of them being retained for the second year. But the most important one, and you know, you know this one that really stood out to us. Is uh, if you look at graduation rates, the graduation rate of our men of color students is uh, about 10% lower than what it is for our female students here uh, in, uh, in our campus specifically. I think that probably the same thing across the nation, to be honest with you, you know, this not only I was except that when I was amazing, you know, they're great students and you know, great things, and, and, uh, but, but again, it's, it's, it's uh, in terms of what looking at our rates of students. We really want to begin that that journey today in terms of helping uh, helping us to determine <clears throat> what what are some of the barriers that exist in terms of our our campus, uh, but also in terms of the students coming uh, into the journey to the university. So that's what we're going to begin today in terms of that journey to explore that, and also with you all to explore <clears throat> some of the possible strategies in order to help improve that. And and again, I think everyone that's here. Today, I do want to kind of like just a little bit the format is not, it's not just a presentation. We really talked about this, and it's going to be more of a dialogue, but that's going to be kind of the format for the slides for today. But before I go any further, uh, I do want to recognize the SPS to Imperial Valley Gender Equity Gap Strategic Planning Team. We've been meeting for months here in terms of organizing some of these things that we're going to be doing. So, Dr. Vanessa Calcon, uh, Marco King, Dr. Ken Lopez, uh, April Masson, and the Vertical Race. Thank you, Watson, for all your work. So, if you want to start thinking in terms of who my panel is today, this amazing young man, and also this amazing young man, also a great singer. I decided to attend that one meeting. Please welcome the picture. It is now my pleasure to turn this over to the modern program. Uh, you've got to this. So, then in the work that it is. It is a little bit of a thing about the Uh, 
you know, I, I think at the time this was all about doing that too. Um, they didn't even have even an orientation for me. I remember just walking school on the campus. And so I remember like once I began to learn how to use resources around me and get a little bit more involved in campus, my academics uh, I improved a lot. I think there's, there's a relationship to that. How, how integrated you feel to the campus and how well you do. So yeah, it's just it's thinking about how institutions can better uh, support you. That was an important part. That was an important part. That was an important When you were going through that in the school, trying to be okay, was there any man that came up to you and said, hey, let me take you in the right way? No, not, not at all. I mean, yeah, I mean, informally or formally, it wasn't, at the beginning, at least, there wasn't, there wasn't anybody, especially not a man to sort of mention it. Exactly, because we, we fall into this thing of you better get yourself, or you know, I got mine, and you get yours, and you get, and there's no one that's literally walking up the ground. Oh, brother, I just told him, I'm back, and I don't want to take the ground. And that is, he, he's not a part of that, he's really just a part of that, he's 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 a part of that. And so the man, when he does this, he has a lot of trouble, so he tries to go into the next, whether it's and he told me, like, this is so embarrassing. He's like, I'm sorry. Did you see that number of that? But the man, they did look at her. He immediately told me to his mom. That's that comes to how oh, it's me. And that, so when I knew the other day, I was so fearful that I felt so, I just told the guy, to help me. So what did I do? And I followed the first sentence of that. Like, I, I was not. I don't know what that school does, but I feel like I have to fight for the spread in my house, so I have to be either as well. Like, I have this, how I've been in high school, that's the whatever university I have to fight for. So that's, I'm like, I'm not going to stand by it. Like, those people, the small decisions that we do, it's the power that we stand in. And school is always that you have to keep pushing, you have to keep pushing. And sometimes, while I'm pushing, you start not to realize the problem. And here, I was pushing so much. Thank you. 
I was talking with literature in English, which is a very interesting wide field. So I didn't have a mentor of poets at all in the library. I had a very general undergraduate. And I think that's sort of commentary on the point of the term came right? But I didn't have that. And so it, it, it took up until, yeah, I was, I was writing college writers to have a mentor of poets. And in graduate school, my mentor of poets was here. So really, in, in a way, academically, I don't know that I don't have to be I get a chance on that, per se. Okay. Here's more of a color. Interpreted education. The old men that do have their education, they, they're pretty much the same about so my mentor was all cops. They were military men, uh, and they were the ones that were pushing me to be better at my job, not at my education, but at my job. My mentor, as far as education, that case, <laughs> there, there were uh, black women who literally said, "You need to go to school." And of course, being a man, and I'm being I had other men, other black men in, in my in my purview and my view who are very fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to go to school, you need to go to work. So we need to go. And I'm gonna follow those men. Even though the all women in my life all have degrees and master's degrees and doctorates and everything. But because these other men were telling me, no, 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 you gotta work, you gotta go back to your bed, you gotta make this. And even as as a man. Many of you know, I tell many of you about my children. I have two children, a seven girl, and three boys. I push all of them. Go to school. Go to school. I push my son to go to work. And I had never thought about it again until I was a When I started analyzing myself, I was why did I get my why have I pushed so hard on this current side of the world? I think it's a high school. They got me on this. I'm like, yes. But it was just one of the things where you just thought, like, you know, they want to get their education and then they want to be one of them. The book is not all that. And if it wasn't really until I started working for you with work, that it kicked in for me. Now I'm going to leave the education out because if I did, it's going to be a little bit of a change. It's for the law. And then they get one of those nice breaks. And they have to have to put it in my office. You know, I've got to work. I think learning and mentoring requires a lot of vulnerability and all the problems you have. And one thing that I've noticed is that, at yeah, least as an academic, uh, that vulnerability has been, in a way, put on women academics. Like, I think if, if as a mentor, mentor you're going to have to learn to be an academic, it's going to help all the women. It, 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 it's a difficult thing to, to, to really mentor, to be vulnerable. Um, even ask someone, hey, do you, do you want to be my mentor or do you want to, uh, or can I be your mentor or do you need help? All those things require a certain amount of vulnerability. I think genderization kind of puts that work all on. I think, I don't know what you all think of that. The audience is so, the way I'm mentoring that I was 
so many things in me where I started thinking like, wow, maybe, maybe it is important. Yeah, I thought every single week, every day of the Bible movie that we did that action, I spent more than the church. And I'm thinking about the community for SKU, talking to different people, not talking to the marketing sometimes. Definitely start getting all the church levels of people and all the stuff about the issues. This is long before I even started working. And 
that path started that I really just knew that it was bigger part of the world or a bigger thing than itself that I had to get part of it. It was, it was amazing to get this opportunity to see me sitting in the ship down the side Because if he had no reached out, I can guarantee you, I already know what I would have done. I would have either still been a cop or I would have just been in the church and just not have never even thought about the large portion of the education space for our people. <laughs> now, uh, and, and all of us, I think all of us have talked about this before. Uh, and they're all been several people here who's been continuing on with the massive price. Potential. Potential. So he's looking at me, a man, in, in, you know, a man in education. You know, and, and this is something that. I know now being in public school, being in the community, being in the community, and getting to support the public, and being in public, in different areas. But the truth be told, I've been, I've lived in a lot of places. Men of color in educational field is very much rare. It is rare. I did, I said, uh, while we were talking, I was sitting there thinking about it. I don't think I'm one black man. I had to make the police cabin. Okay. But as an educator, there were no educators in K 12. And in the college experiences that I did have, whether it was the uh, Central University, or C, University of Maryland, I didn't have any male at all. So when I see men teaching out of the watch, I'm excited, period. Then when it's men of color, that's a whole nother level. Um, so, if I would say anything to any young man, like, well, especially that he's driving better for himself, do it for him. Do it for you. Because someone else is already watching. There are other people that are watching, and they're going to see your success. They're going to see you grow. Their stuff will be all the way But do it for you. Make sure you're standing out because on your own two feet, that's all you can land with. Really, where your confidence has got to start. It's just you. So, if you do it for you, everyone else, that would be me. I guess, um, what is the measure of success in small increments? And let me give an example of what I mean by that. Uh, I remember. I remember when I was an undergraduate and I really wanted to go to the event for the speaker that was talking about Chicago's literature. And uh, I thought, okay, you know, because I'm going to be super, I'm super track hard. By nature, I'm a track hard. I'll even put that back. It's part of the show. Um, I said, you know what? I'm going to ask a question at this event of uh, this public speaker. And so I like brainstorm, like, what kind of questions can I ask? And I planned it. Like, this is a very small thing. Some people probably would just go to the event and ask a question without even taking twice. 
So for me, I had to plan it. And I got there, and then uh, they didn't time was going out, and I was like getting stage fright just to ask the question. And then finally, I asked it, and uh, you know, it was a good response. And for me, I was like, I was like in cloud nine the whole day just because I made that progress. I was a student that was always sitting in the back, they used to wear a cap on purpose, but I could put my head down. And so to move from that to, well, to being right here is it's just ridiculous to even imagine that. But maybe that success is falling to me. Do small little things. Even in class, maybe one day you'll say, I'm going to ask a question in class. And then that's a big thing. The second real quick is don't, on the other hand, don't, don't let your failures and things define you, your identity. Right. Uh, so if you get a, a, a if you get a D in a paper, that doesn't mean you're a D student. That means that you know that particular paper you didn't do as well as you could have. Uh, so don't let that define you. I know a lot of people are like, well, I, I got I, I got a D in English, but I must not be good at literature. But no, I, I feel uh, I'm a century American lit, and I'm a professor of that century. Right. But it's because of those instruments. I, I I learned to do that to make my success really really uh, mm -hmm. Be very, very, very small. Well, I'm not. Well, I'm not. 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 I'm not.
he gets the question a lot like, why don't you go back and get your credentials? Why don't you get your master's? And he gets very anxious, like when people ask that. But I know people, they ask it with like intention, like, hey, like, do you want to like continue? If so, I can help you. And that's his fear sometimes. It's just like the rejection or the judgment or the pressure. So I think that that's the reason, one of the reasons why he won't like come back and pursue like his credentials, um, <laughs> just fear and rejection. But, you know, I've told him like, there's really good people here on campus who are ready to mentor him and guide him and, you know, and support him and everything he does. But at the same time, I'm also very patient with like, not pressuring him, but at the same time, like giving him that encouragement that whenever you want to come back, it's okay. We'll be supportive people here for you. Anyone else? Um, I think about it. You know, I was going through all the men, and you know, my life. Most of them just don't want to go to school. But my brother-in-law graduated here with myself, and I noticed when he was here. It was strange because I was here and my sister was here and nobody really said anything to us, but to him, they were always in competition with him, with my brother-in-law. What grades did you get? How are you doing? And thank God my brother-in-law's the type of person. He didn't have a problem. You know, he's like, I'll put my report card down to yours anytime because I'm getting straight A's, you know. But he was that different personality. And then I was now I have my grandson here. He was admitted to the nursing program on the program. But you know, at the same time, I, he hasn't really worried about it. I was more fearful being here because I'm like, when he was at IBC, I'm like, I can keep an eye on him, I can help him, I can this. And when he told me he got accepted, I was like, but I was like, what? I called him, hey, my grandson's going to be there. Keep an eye on him. <laughs> so, because you know when it's a bigger school, he's straight out of high school, does he have that support? Yes, I know his parents have got to give it more, but from the school, because from me being an alumni here, I know it wasn't that many blacks here, and they don't understand the struggle, the fears, the other things you go through. And it was like, that's my baby gonna be there, you know. First of all, he in this program, it's gonna be hard. He's gonna have to give everything else that everybody else has to give. But he's a black man on top of it. So you know, it's like I had more of those fears because I don't discuss it with him because I don't want to put that fear on him. But still, I pray and reach out to anybody I can. And really, I've been good because I haven't been going finding other people or checking on them like I normally. Do. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? Yeah. Um, I all of my officers and secretaries or teachers, or specifically a teacher, or you work for what we call a, um, like a county uh, water team, but I'm originally not a chance to work on the county water team. Except for what? Oh my God, so I don't know if I can do that. He chose to do what he probably So because we didn't do it, he went to tax school. And I was just because of the trial, I had a train from town. So it was more like a leader in the streets and whatnot. Um, not a, a loser because he had, he had a went to tech school. He just felt that was important. And his friends at the time really liked him. But fast forward to today, we was something like, yeah, this is what you're looking about. Those same friends, I guess they found some. They got the light at some point and they went to college and said it. So the answer to the question, one of the reasons, um, so not just kind of follow up people, maybe you know, it's not really because of how uh, your media family, what you were doing at that time. So you think what you were doing, except when you recognize in the light, it is the product of the library. Um, but then that leads me to my, my question. What is something that, um, some of the family costume, um, the need for the kind of color, one of the reasons why um, some of my said they don't go um, around see them on campus or they don't do well on campus, some of that needs to work. Right? So, yeah, we're going to school and we're work. And I thought, um, the part of the one of the things that you can do for in the water, which is kind of what brought the beginning question. That you think um, having jobs on campus would help um, men of color 
put here in Cameron to study and then go work. From Cameron, do you think that would make an impact, make the story different for you as a student? And for you as well, I'm not going to that, but do you think if you have that in the past, that a job on Cameron, in all the colleges that you attended, do you think that would have made you stay on campus and graduate just before you can work on this part? So, with the info, what are you? So, now and in fact, it would have made a difference for you, and it would make a difference for you now. Uh, I can definitely say it in the past. Here's some things I did not know when I was coming out of high school. I did not know you could get a job in your college. I did not know. Uh, what I what was pictured and put in front of me was you go to school, go there to learn, and I knew I could not. That's what I did not know anything. I didn't know my bones. I, I, didn't, I didn't know my FAFSA. I knew none of this. Only thing everyone ever said to me, if you're going to go to college, you got to take it. So I went to the military instead because I knew I needed money. That's why I went. So if I had known then that you can go to school and get that back with and apply for a job and work on the campus, oh yeah, you've been talking about things. Um, and I still think that if knowing that it's coming out that it's going to work here in the why? Feeling that you, you, you have a job outside the school, you're not going to be flexible with the hours. I, I work I work for the NPC, I work for the IMT and the photographer. And the the photographer did a lot of things that a lot of things that like they didn't tell you. They didn't tell you. My friends didn't tell me that they were still my friends they look at your bigger things out with me. We're asking me questions on my phone. <laughs> and upper bound in the story of that, you know, it looks pretty cool and cool. You came up for a year and then you don't have to spend any money. Is that important? Is it okay? You don't need to work with that. So I was at the hospital as well. My guys were like, I'm working. And we look right now, going to the AS, AS, and the head of the DOC. So I don't have a lot of
thing that came to the NFL. And so we're slowly in the kind of and like we look at most students all the time because wait a minute, I can't even go to school because like I'm working. Uh, I got four jobs because I'm gonna walk back with it. I'm not my kids. But there's loans out there. I don't think you're gonna have to your home, but if you feel that there's a thing going to fix your mom, you can go a little bit. Some of the great investments that you can make is that investment in yourself so that you're not killing yourself and you're struggling with school so that you can go pay the bill. And then again, I mean, I do think they're all, they're all out there doing good things and they're weekend and have good credit as well. That becomes another thing that sometimes we don't, we're scared of that. We think it's bad. Don't get along, but, but really, it's about making an investment. <laughs> Guys, deal with self doubt and find more motivation to continue to make a world world. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, Yeah. 
did all these things. It's just the small perspective that I literally just blew off like it's nothing. And that's when I started to realize nothing. In my office now, you know, just different on board, but I just want to hear it. The office came to me. So we find me. But I think it's the title I can go because I have to. So I have to kind of that to realize that I have to get all this to be broken. And not because it's, it's something that is small, but I think I've already done it. I've already done it. There was a small perception. Wanted to contribute. Um, I think, first of all, this is a wonderful conversation, um, such a rich conversation, which has its goodness and its difficultness, right? Because there's so many, so many factors that affect some of the issues that, that we're talking about. But I'm, I'm really glad to be able to talk about it, and particularly about education, where I'm going. Um, I came back to the, the academic environment because I think education is transformational and it gives us choices and options. And that, more than anything else, is what I would like to know how to communicate better to um, students, particularly to men of color. Um, because I think often, for all the different reasons that we've identified, people will see, and young ones will see, um, their future just has to appear, whereas we want them to be able to appear. Um, and that for all of us, I mean, we don't have to be made to have all of them in all places, but how can we communicate that? that you know, come for the love of learning, certainly, but if nothing else, come and just finish, because you will have more options once you finish and you have that piece of paper. Um, and have the choices and you know, to be like, autonomous individuals we do have choice and agency. So, you know, how can I communicate that future horizon up here and just say you will have choice no matter you want to come. I know just saying it saying over and over one how do you actually get to point to three years? It's a full conversation. To say it, say, oh, you can do it without knowing what the barriers in that person's life is almost at least without literally just talking to them. Why do you want to, you know, why aren't you going to school? Or why do you want to, whatever direction can get you in the door, to literally start having full experience and say, well, you know, this don't have to do is then a personal investment. Let me show you this. Let me show you how to do this. Let me show you how to do your task. Let me show you how to fill out the floor alone. Let me show you where uh, you know this application for facility services where we have all of the students. The library. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever possible, that we have to find out what the hour. Because a lot of times we judge what is possible. We're just saying, you know, oh, you're going to go. And in the back of that month, I can pull from you that month. But by, if you only understood what's going on in your life, with your life, you don't have the time to waste people going to school. Well, so we have to look at a full conversation and then a personal investment. <laughs> Exactly. Oh, 
What are the top three qualities that you think a good mentor should have to men of color? I think, I think, I think you kind of like talked about it today, which is the ability to, to be vulnerable. As a mentor, not just a mentee, but a man, be vulnerable. I think that's probably the number one. I remember when I was uh, interviewing for a job, and they, they were talking about, well, how do we, how do we uh, improve the many classrooms? And I remember they told me, like, what would you do in a job interview? What would you do to sort of increase vulnerability in the classroom? I said, I didn't think so. I didn't know what the classroom is. What that means for, for different people is a different thing, right? Uh, for me, it's, it's in the classroom, it's, it's talking about my process and the struggles I went through. Other things are different. So, I think the number one trait for a mentor is the ability to, to show vulnerability because mentoring is about multiple things. I think we're keeping for that. Uh, 
Thank you. 
Thank you very much. Uh, again, I want to thank you all for coming out here today. I know there's a lot going on in the space that, uh, that, that, uh, that you're going to be doing right now. Like, even though that, that are people from the volleyball game from the <laughs> Thank you for being here. Uh, I just want to give a, a, a huge hand to our department. Thank you so much for your time, Jerry, and being vulnerable out here uh, in the state. I also want to thank the rest of our team here. April, we have the camera, 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 I do want you to know that this is the beginning. Uh, we hope to have more events like this in terms of the continuing this discussion. We are working also right now on a survey that is going to be going out in terms of to our students, uh, especially our men of color students. We really want to learn more about your experiences and really work hard to see them, what we can do in terms of to make your experience better. And uh, also, uh, in terms of to be able to make some, uh, uh, in terms of maybe a huge dent in regards to the equity gaps on our campus. And thank you all for being here. So, hey, take care. Have a great rest of the day. If you're hungry, you can take some pizza with you. We have some pizza. We also have some water and some breaks uh, over here as well. This this was live stream, live stream and uh, we and it's also being recorded as well. Uh, uh, so, that is available there. But uh, again, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.